Anointing is a word that evokes a sense of purpose, something special and reserved, like a divine whisper among the many voices of the world. When we say that someone is anointed by God, we speak of something not seen with the eyes nor heard with common ears. It's a call that resonates in the depths of the soul, an invitation that transforms the ordinary into the extraordinary. Imagine every human being as an instrument waiting for the musician's hand. Anointing is the moment when God's hand touches this instrument and draws from it music that was once only silence. There is something in this journey that is not limited to the individual, but overflows into the world around them. The anointed is someone who not only walks among others, but whose walk illuminates the path of those around them. It's a discreet movement, almost imperceptible, like the breeze whispering through the trees, but its effect is profound and lasting. Throughout the scriptures, we see men and women who, touched by God, left behind ordinary lives and embraced a purpose that transcended them. Like David, who went from being a shepherd to a king, or Moses, who from a man fleeing his past became the leader of an entire nation. This text is an invitation to look differently at the signs that indicate the presence of this anointing. They are silent yet powerful signs, discreet but undeniable. In each of them there is a reflection of a greater purpose like the sun, reflected in a puddle of water shining with a light that is not its own but illuminates wherever it goes. More than a privilege, anointing is a responsibility. It is a silent pact between the Creator and the creature, a sacred mission to be fulfilled. On this path, with an open heart and keen eyes, we will explore together the marks that reveal this divine presence, traversing the echoes of the scriptures and the eternal truths they carry. If you are enjoying this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share with those who might benefit from this message. And stay until the end, where you will find a special prayer for each of these signs, helping to strengthen your communion with God. The first sign of a life anointed by God is a love so deep and constant that it resonates in every corner of the soul. Perhaps you have experienced brief moments when you felt that everything made sense, when, for an instant, life seemed full of purpose and fulfillment. It's this kind of love we're talking about, not a fleeting emotion, but a lasting passion that sustains the spirit and gives direction to existence. This love is like a flame that even in the midst of storms refuses to be extinguished. It is a burning desire for God's presence that permeates every thought and action. Now you may wonder, how can I have this love in my life? The answer begins in surrender. Loving God deeply requires that you let go of distractions and surrender to Him your deepest longings. It is a journey that requires time and dedication, but the reward is unmatched. A peace that defies circumstances, a joy that remains steadfast amid challenges. When this deep-rooted love grows, it not only fills the soul, but transforms every aspect of your life, from how you face hardships to how you interact with others. The benefit of cultivating this love is immense. It becomes the anchor in an unstable world, the foundation upon which you can build your faith and purpose. It's the reason why David, even amidst the most intense tribulations, could cry out, My soul thirsts for you, my whole being longs for you. Psalm 63, 1. When you experience this thirst, you'll understand that nothing in this world can satisfy it except God's presence. And that changes everything. The way you see your struggles, your achievements, and most importantly, how you love others. The second sign of a life anointed by God is the wisdom that transcends human understanding and manifests in spiritual discernment. This wisdom is like a lighthouse in the fog. 
illuminating the most tortuous paths and revealing truths that common eyes cannot see. Perhaps you have felt the weight of complex decisions or faced moments when the answer seemed to slip through your fingers. For those who are anointed, there is invisible assistance, an internal compass that always points to the divine will. It is a wisdom that, as James describes, comes from above, pure, peace-loving, considerate and full of mercy. James 3.17 Lewis, in Mere Christianity, addressed wisdom with disarming simplicity, stating that a mind touched by God's truth becomes like a finely tuned instrument capable of perceiving the divine melody behind the most mundane situations. For Lewis, discerning God's will is not just an intellectual act, but an experience that involves the whole person, the mind, heart and soul. He believed that this divine wisdom was like a light that comes from outside and illuminates the mind from within, allowing us to see more clearly not just the world, but our own place in it. Think about the moments when you need to decide between paths that seem equally valid but carry different implications. Spiritual wisdom and discernment are what allow you to choose, with the awareness that your decision resonates in eternity. Lewis would say that true wisdom is reflected in the humility of admitting our limitations and seeking divine guidance. It's understanding that our minds, when devoid of God's light, are like dark rooms. We need God's presence so that the windows can open and the sun can enter. The third sign of a life anointed by God is a heart shaped by service and marked by humility. It's not a superficial humility that seeks praise for modesty. It is a genuine willingness to serve and put the needs of others above our own. This humility does not show off in grand gestures, but reveals itself in the small actions of everyday life. Listening attentively, helping without expecting anything in return, smiling silently. Jesus, by washing his disciples' feet, not only taught them about service, but showed that true greatness lies in bowing in love. John 13, 14, 15. The person anointed by God reflects this servant's heart, living in constant giving and care for others. Lewis, in The Four Loves, provides a deep reflection on the essence of true humility. He describes the humble not as someone who thinks less of themselves, but as someone who thinks of themselves less. For Lewis, humility is the starting point for selfless love, the love that moves not out of obligation or in search of recognition, but from an authentic desire to benefit others. In one of his most emblematic works, Mere Christianity, he points out that true humility is a call to step outside oneself and realize that there is something infinitely greater than the self. This servant's heart does not seek its own glory, but is moved by a love that echoes the heart of Christ. A servant's heart transforms the way you relate to others and to yourself. It tears down the barriers of pride and allows you to find joy in the simplest actions. It's a path to experiencing true happiness, which is born from surrender. In a world that promotes the self above all, humility is a balm that heals, that unites, and that shows the way to a fuller life. Lewis believed that by serving others with humility, we are drawing closer to God's love and, consequently, to our true identity. The fourth sign of a life anointed by God is resilience, a quality that shines in the darkest moments and is revealed in a perseverance that overcomes adversity. This strength is not simply the ability to resist. It is the art of transforming pain into learning and struggle into growth. When Job lost everything, his response was not that of someone broken, but of someone who, despite the wounds, still trusted in God. 
The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job 1.21 This ability to maintain faith, firm in the midst of storms, is a mark of divine anointing, a reminder that true strength comes from outside, from God, and not from ourselves. Lewis, in The Problem of Pain, teaches us that pain can be one of God's most powerful instruments for shaping human character. He says that suffering is like a megaphone of God, calling us out of our pride and reminding us of our dependence on him. For Lewis, perseverance is more than enduring suffering. It is finding meaning and growth in it. He believed that in our most vulnerable moments, we are reminded that the strength that really matters is not our own, but God's strength, which sustains us when everything around us crumbles. Facing a challenge that threatens your peace, a sudden loss, a failure, a moment of loneliness, the resilience that comes from God's anointing not only gives you the courage to face these situations, but brings a peace that the world cannot understand. It's the assurance that, regardless of the outcome, you are safe in God. This confidence does not eliminate pain, but changes the perspective. You begin to see struggles as parts of a larger plan, as pieces of a puzzle that one day will make sense. The fifth sign that someone is anointed by God is the authority that reveals itself in a quiet, but unmistakable way, and the courage that arises to sustain that authority. It's not an authority that imposes fear or asserts itself by force, but a presence that conveys confidence and makes others recognize it without resistance. It's the same courage that Peter showed when he stood up before the crowd at Pentecost, even though he had just denied Jesus, Acts 2. This authority is a gift of divine anointing, a sign that the person has been empowered to fulfill a purpose that goes beyond themselves. Lewis, in the Chronicles of Narnia, illustrates this spiritual authority through characters like Aslan, whose mere presence brought a type of courage to those around him. Lewis shows us that this courage and authority do not stem from pride, but from truth, and that when someone is aware that they are walking in God's light, they do not fear the darkness. He wrote that true courage is not the absence of fear, but the willingness to face what is right, even when fear whispers to back down. This is the essence of spiritual authority, a courage that does not come from human will, but from the conviction that God is by your side, guiding every step. Spiritual authority is not reserved for public moments or great feats. It manifests in the small daily decisions and in the courage to stand firm in what is true and just. When you speak with authority, even in challenging situations, people feel that there is something beyond your words. There is the strength of God behind them. This type of courage transforms fear into an opportunity to grow and to show the world that faith is not a passive idea, but an active and present force. The sixth sign of God's anointing is a burning desire for holiness and a life of righteousness. This pursuit is not motivated by a fear of punishment or an attempt to impress, but by a genuine longing to reflect the divine character. The anointed person understands that holiness is not a burden, but a privilege, a path that brings them closer to the heart of God and illuminates their being with divine presence. This pursuit is like the effort of an artist who wishes to capture beauty on canvas. It's a continuous and conscious journey of moving away from what is impure and drawing nearer to what is eternal and true. Lewis, in The Great Divorce, describes the journey of holiness as a difficult and often lonely choice. He points out that it requires an act of will to follow this path, a desire to leave behind what is easy and comfortable in exchange for what is good and right. Lewis believed that seeking holiness 
was like tuning an instrument for a heavenly melody, where every act of renunciation and every right decision contributed to a symphony of life that resonated with God's music. For him, the true Christian life was a progression of surrender, a walk that transforms the human soul day by day, making it more and more like Christ. And why is this pursuit important for you? Because living a righteous life does not mean being exempt from faults, but being willing to get up after each fall and choose good again. It's the conscious decision to reject what stains the spirit and to embrace what purifies it. This holiness permeates your actions, thoughts and words, directly affecting how you relate to the world. It gives you the strength to resist temptations and the power to act with kindness when no one is watching. Lewis would say that holiness is the lens that clarifies vision, helping to see the world as it really is, a battlefield where every choice echoes in eternity. The seventh and last sign of a life anointed by God is the visible manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, a clear and continuous reflection that God dwells in and transforms someone from the inside. When Paul speaks to the Galatians about the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, Galatians 5, 23 he is not describing qualities that arise from human effort. Instead, he is painting the portrait of a soul that having been touched and shaped by a divine anointing, naturally expresses these virtues like a tree that bears good and healthy fruit in its due time. Lewis, in Mere Christianity, explains that true change in Christian character does not come from an attempt to be good out of obligation, but from Christ himself dwelling in us and acting through us. He argues that the Christian life is like a house that God enters to renovate. At first he might fix leaks or adjust broken windows, things you expected, but soon he begins to build something completely new, a house that is not just improved but transformed into a palace because he himself intends to dwell there. The fruits of the Spirit are the visible signs of this interior transformation, evidence that the house of the soul is being renewed to reflect the beauty of God. The manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit brings significant changes in how you deal with the world and how the world responds to you. Love, even in the most difficult situations, joy that persists amid hardships, peace that calms in the midst of chaos. These are the marks of a transformed life that touch the people around you in ways that words cannot. Living with the fruit of the Spirit is being a presence that comforts and inspires, a witness that the anointing of God is real and powerful. In a world hungry for kindness and truth, you become a beacon of hope. Now let's pray. Dear beloved Lord, creator of heaven and earth, I thank you for the gift of love that you infuse into our hearts. I pray that my love for you grows day by day, like a river that never runs dry, flowing and always seeking more of your presence. May my heart, like David's, be moved by an insatiable desire for you, seeking you in the calm of the morning and the stillness of the night. May I love you not only with words, but with all my soul, mind, and strength, letting this love transform every thought and action. God, when the distractions of this world try to steal my attention, give me a spirit focused on you. May your love be the flame that guides my choices, calms my anxieties, and reminds me that in you I find fullness. May I reflect this love not only in moments of joy, but also in trials, knowing that true love is one that remains, just as you remain faithful to us. Lord, source of all wisdom, I place before you my heart, and ask that you guide me in every decision, great and small. 
Grant me, Father, the discernment that goes beyond human understanding, the vision that penetrates the essence of things and recognizes your hand in every detail. Like Solomon, I desire to understand what is right and to act according to your will, not for my glory, but so that your name may be exalted through me. May the wisdom that comes from you be the lamp for my feet and the light for my path. Help me to discern what is true. Amid the confusing voices that surround me, and may I have the humility to always seek your counsel. May each word of mine be seasoned with your understanding, and may I be a voice of peace and clarity wherever I am. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the example of your Son, who came to serve and not to be served. May my heart be shaped in the image of yours, filled with humility and willing to put the needs of others above my own. Teach me, Lord, to serve with genuine love, without expecting anything in return, recognizing that in each act of service I reflect your glory. Help me to recognize that all capacity and talent come from you and are for your service. May humility be my guide, and may, in each small gesture of kindness, I see and honor you. May I serve with joy, knowing that in your economy, he who makes himself least is considered great. Lord God, who are my rock and fortress, I thank you for being my strength in times of trial. I ask you to grant me the resilience necessary to face difficulties with faith and hope, knowing that I am never alone. Just like Job, may I proclaim your goodness, even in the midst of storms, and trust that you are working, even when I do not see. Grant me the ability to persevere, not with my own strength, but with your strength that sustains me. May I always remember that trials are opportunities to grow, and that by enduring challenges with faith, your name may be exalted. May my confidence in you be unwavering, and may my spirit remain firm, knowing that you are faithful in all your promises.